Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to recommence. There's a few stragglers, but the... um, last year at last year's conference, for those of you who were the, here, we did, or oh, Dave did um, a Delphi uh, process, looking at the wishes and desires as far as research goes uh, within the delegates present, who represented all organisations and associations within the profession. So I now hand you over to Dave Newell. Um, who's going to present the results. Dave, over to you. Um, how do I get my thingy up? <laughs> Too quick, <laughs> I should rephrase that. <laughs> In, in trying to get the first uh, EBM lecture off the ground. This year, Lawrence has done this entire thing by himself. Of course, with his lovely wife, Laura, I suspect, in support. So, absolutely. So, it's a great thing, and it seems to have uh, sort of taken on a life of its own, and I'm hoping it's going to be a sort of a regular thing. So, so great stuff, Lawrence, and, and uh, thank you for inviting us back and, and all that you're doing. Um, so, um, last year, with the uh, 50 or so delegates that we had, uh, we spent an afternoon doing a workshop, and uh, some of you were here, and some of you weren't, um, and I'd like to present the results, and it was a rather ambitious type of plan. So, what we were doing was looking, trying to think about uh, what we might look like in 2025. And for people of, of my age, that was a pretty daunting thing uh, to, to think about. But uh, really, it was about you know, what the profession might look like um, and you know, where we wanted to go, what we wanted to be doing. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about that and how that worked and then the results we found out. So, um, the aim was to do this, to explore potential goals, threats and opportunities, and research priorities. That was a sort of broad aim that we were um, trying to achieve uh, with the group of people that we had here. Um, now, first of all, I want to think about um, where this might fit in the overall context of where we are now as a profession. Um, now... Um, the numbers of growth is uh, around uh, 3,150 in 2016. I couldn't find the most recent one. Uh, the GCC, and maybe I missed it, but they don't have a 2017 up there at the moment, uh, registered in the UK. Uh, osteopaths, about 5,300. Uh, the allied health professionals, uh, uh, reg uh, regulated by the HCPC, uh, um, Physiotherapists, 55,000, quite a big disparity. If you look at the uh, published rate of growth of the professions, which is uh, a little bit of a squashy thing, so it's not absolute, um, they're sort of these sort of things. So around about 3.5% uh, for the chiropractic profession, uh, about similar stuff for the osteopathic profession over the last, in those time periods, and... Uh, uh, somewhat smaller than, uh, for the physiotherapists, uh, but obviously the physio physiotherapists are pretty stable and they, they've got a very large number there already. Now, all of these three professions, uh, to some extent, uh, address the same problems in society uh, with some differences, but, you know, we could sort of say that it's not unreasonable to lump us all in, to some extent, into seeing similar conditions. Um, Incidentally, at this sort of rate, somebody's calculated, I think it would take 22 years to double the size of the chiropractic profession. So, you know, it's, this is where we are now, and, you know, our idea was to think of well, where we want to be. So, what do we do? Well, the research suggests, as, as much as perhaps um, uh, some people feel that that shouldn't be the case, 
Uh, the research suggests that the majority of patients who see chiropractic care in the UK do so for pain relief. About 92% of them, when uh, given a survey uh, from these guys in 2015, uh, said that, that, that um, it was for pain relief, and 80% of patients said it was increased mobility, and, and I suspect these two are somewhat related. And a recent paper by, uh, by these guys here included uh, Simon French, uh, Australian uh, academic researcher um, who was at the RCC, I think, just recently. Um, they looked at a whole bunch of publications globally concerning uh, utilisation of chiropractic care and, uh, and came up with these sorts of figures. 72% of chiropractic patients seek care for low back pain or neck pain, about 50%, 22%. So, so that's how many we got in the UK. This is generally what our patients come to see chiropractors for and what we do. So we know that given those figures that the problem associated with those conditions is very large. We know that low back pain is the number one condition in causing disability adjusted life years, which is a way of measuring how much disability um, is present in, in, a, in society. Um, neck pain is number four on this list. We know that there are varying figures. We don't really know how many patients go to UK GPs per year, but it varies between one in three and maybe one in seven, around about one in five or so, um, probably are MSK related. What does that mean for us? That means that's a shitload of patients. That's a lot of patients going to GPs for MSK. If only one in ten of those patients, being really conservative, one in ten of those one in five was appropriate for chiropractic care um, and remained in the NHS, that means that there are around about 220,000 potentially without access to chiropractic care in the UK. Um, so that's a lot of patients. So there's, so there's issues here. You know, these are the problems. These are what we see. Uh, what do we want to do about that? What, what, as a profession, where do we want to go? Is that something we're interested in? Maybe it isn't. So that was the sort of attempt to think about these things uh, on that particular session last year. So what do we do? So how do we get the data on the day? So this was an interesting process. It was a little bit like flying by the seat of your pants. Um, we had some methodology here, but uh, it was uh, basically asking a, a group of people uh, about what they thought about stuff and then trying to collate the results together. So we had an afternoon workshop uh, where uh, the delegates got together uh, into groups and, uh, and talked about these things based on some questions we asked them. The participants, well, the first 30 tickets... Um, were, were invited people. So we, we, we tried to think about a representation of the sorts of people in the UK that might be interested or representative of institutions. Um, and, uh, and we invited all of those people, and some of them said yes, some said no, but we managed to fill all those 30 up with sort of targeting people who we thought were going to either have an opinion, which is not uh, difficult to find in the chiropractic profession, <laughs> um, or, or might have an informed opinion or, or, or might be interested in having an opinion um, uh, in some sort of way. The next 20 tickets were open. And I think it went up on a site and people applied to come along. So there was a little bit of a mix between sort of uh, purposely sampled, if you like, and, uh, and a sort of uh, proportion at the top of that that was uh, people that just wanted to come along, open tickets, they bought the tickets and come along. And we ended up with 51 because, uh, because there was one person that really wanted to come along, I think, and, and ended up being, being, yes, come along. I think that was true, I can't remember now. Um, and, uh, and we represented those organizations. Uh, at least one person. Uh, was, was somewhat associated with those organizations. So we tried to uh, get a sort of mix, a range uh, across uh, f in this group. We'll, we'll see the limitations on that. 
We use this uh, particular nominal group technique. And a nominal group technique is published, so I didn't just make it up. All right? Um, <laughs> It's a type of technique where you can either use a Delphi process. A Delphi process is where you sort of get a consensus on a day, and then you, then you send a, a list of ranking back to people on email a few times, and then you get your ranks coming out of what's the best thing everybody thinks and what's the lowest thing that everybody thinks. This is a sort of like a bolt-on process uh, where we add this um, situation where uh, we start with the split-up groups that... Um, Individuals in the groups each come up with some of the answers to the questions we ask them, and then it goes back into the group, and then a facilitator discusses what's, what, 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 what the, the group are feeling, and then we try to come up with some ranks on the day, and then we went through a process. And then we did the Delphi process after we'd got a, a list of stuff that sort of emerged from that nominal group technique. So what did we ask? Well, this is uh, an example of the first bit. So we wanted to find out goals. We wanted to say, uh, you know, what, what are your goals? So this is the specific question we asked each group. And each group had a facilitator, by facilitators. By 2025, in your view, what single must, might, and dream goal should the UK prof chiropractic profession achieve? That's the question we asked. And then we gave people post-it notes, and everybody sat down and on their own, wrote their own things, and then... And then chucked that into the group, and then we had a discussion about it. Uh, and uh, and that, that's the sort of process we did. Facilitators had to do that. If there was some consensus, that was good. If there was some difficulty, they tried to get a consensus. You know, this is a somewhat sort of human process, but we were trying to get some representation of what people thought. So that was the first thing we did, must, might, and dream goals. And then we additionally asked uh, these questions as well. At this time, in your view, what one major threat and one major opportunity does the UK profession face? And the third question uh, we asked was, uh, at this time, in your view, and keeping in mind the goals, opportunities, and threats discussed, because this came at the end of the session, what three research themes should the UK chiropractic profession pursue and fund during the next five to eight years? Yeah, so whether these questions were completely neutral, I suspect they weren't. Uh, but we asked some questions, and we were trying to get some viewpoints. So what did we do with that data? Well, it ended up being pretty, uh, sort of quite a messy experience. <laughs> we ended up with like hundreds of stick notes, you know, sticky notes all over the place on, on bits of large paper that runners had to come and collect and then pile up in the corner. And, uh, and at the end of the session, we, it was like just multiple colored stick notes, sticky notes, post-it notes, um, with, with sort of... You know, mostly mine were illegible. You know, other people's could be read. Uh, it was just, it, it, was, it was quite interesting what we got. But, but um, so we had to try and then boil that down into something that made sense. Um, so in order to uh, then send out a list of potential priorities that people could rank on email because by that time, everybody had left, obviously. So we wanted to go through this Delphi process. So we had to boil this stuff down. So that's, that's, that's a really clean bit of raw data. Here, some of the other stuff looked rather more messy than that. Huh? Was that Jonathan's, was it? Just typical. <laughs> so about a week or a couple of weeks later, myself and Elizabeth met up with the ACCC, and... Uh, and we, we, as you can see, we've got all those sheets of paper with the sticky notes over them. And, and what we tried to do was boil those notes, because obviously some people had written the same thing. So, so each group had to rank each of these things already. So we had ranks one, two, and three, uh, priorities one, two, and three for each of them. Uh, and then, but, but each group might have said the same thing. So we wanted to boil those down into statements that represented everything that had been said, in a way. And so, and that was a judgment call. You know, if it was like um, more chiropractors increase the size of the profession, we decided both those things meant the same thing. You know, uh, um, increase the number of chiropractors, um, make the profession larger. And there was all sorts of ways it was written down, but we tried to boil it down into similar statements that represented the same thing. So what final themes did we get? Now, we, uh, myself and Elizabeth, did not add any more themes, and we did not take away any themes. 
We just tried to boil them down into a set of statements that represented this sort of this mess, if you like, of stuff and opinions on these sticky notes. So this is this is our raw data. So we hear each of the, the different groups, and you can see, for example, in this must one, the first, uh, the top theme, uh, as as ranked by all five groups were saying, so, you know, three of them said growth, two of them said recognition. Yeah, so, so what we did was we had a growth theme, and then we had a, a, a recognition, reputation theme, uh, and then we had first port of call, uh, um, uh, there's another first point of call. So people said first point of call in lots of different ways. Go to MSK profession, that was the same, so we lumped that together into a theme that said first port of call, go to, you know, do you see what we sort of tried to do here? Okay, that's what we got. So, these are the themes that came out of that that we then put into a survey, right, and, and uh, so it represented what people did. Now, we have not, we didn't rank these, so what we did was these are the themes that emerged from the groups, from all those sticky notes, and then we randomized these in their order, and then put them into a survey, and then that became a survey that we sent out to the 51 delegates um, that uh, and asked them to say, rank these must goals. Yeah? Uh, one, two, three, whatever. So that was the must goals. There were some might goals and dream goals as well. I'm going to put those on. Here were the threats. Remember, this is what the group had said. Here were the opportunities. Some, there were lots more of opportunities. Maybe people feeling positive in the afternoon. Who knows? But there were more that emerged. Um, now, when it came to research, there was just a huge number of ideas. People wanted to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So, so we couldn't then group together. So we ended up just writing separate headings for, you know, lots of research ideas. Um, some of which we could group together, some we couldn't. And so we split these in, this research into three areas. Clinical research, research models, approaches to care. And, uh, and sort of uh, research that might affect stakeholders like patients or commissioners or the government or whatever. Um, now, that was something we did introduce, but it was just to try and wrestle this amount of information to the ground in some sort of way. So, essentially then, we did this. So, we, we put a survey monkey together and with a number of pages on, this is the first page. So, this page considers the must, might and dream goals as generated by the Oxford Forum groups. The following headers describe the must-achieve goals by 2025 as generated by the groups attending the Oxford Forum. Please rank them in order of priority. And there were the seven things that, we, that came out. Yeah? So that's what we did. And that went out all to all 51 again. And we, I think we sent out two emails, maybe two or three or something. We did some reminders, didn't we? And sort of said, you know, come on, you bastards. <laughs> Fill the bloody thing in. Um, and, uh, I, well, we got, what do we get? So we got a 63% response rate. 32 of the 51 ranked these things. That's what we got. Right now, I don't expect you to read that, <laughs> uh, but it, it was tricky because, um, you know, there were some things where uh, it wasn't clear if you use one metric that there was one rank. Uh, so, for example, we use the median rank. That's the middle rank. It's like a way of, if you've got a normal distribution, but it's not normally distributed, so we had to use the median rank, not the mean rank. Uh, and the median rank is what, you know, what is the middle rank that people, the, it's sort of, yeah, the middle rank. The mode is the most popular rank, but then we got, uh, sometimes we get more than one mode. So we get an equal number of people saying number two and an equal number of people saying number one. So we've got multiple modes. So I essentially did some stats on this and made a sort of judgment along with these interquartile ranges here uh, and tried to sort of, you know, for example, this one, this one, you know, if you add those two together, that's sort of four. It's 1.25 to 5, so uh, this, one is, this one is higher ranked than this one, which is 5, 4 and 1, but except the interquartile range is the same. So we, we try to sort of figure it out. Obviously, you know, these are higher ranked than some of these ones down here where you've got a mode of 7. 
but it was tricky. All right. Anyway, that's what we did. That's what we did with the uh, opportunities and threats. It was a little bit easier to see opportunities where these ones clearly came at the top. Um, but, um, and now these were the response rates for the research ideas. And the ones in red here were eliminated because actually each of these were only responded to by three people. So we only kept in the ones where it was greater than 80%. Greater than 27 people responded to each of these things. So we got a lot of blanks. So we only looked at those ones where a good proportion of people responded back. Now, luckily, the results of this are not going to define chiropractic UK policy for the next 50 years. All right? <laughs> so this is just an exercise in just trying to uh, get some idea about what people think, at least from this group. So what can we say? So I'm going to have a look at each category. Goals. The top three goals were, were these. That were somewhat representative of the group, I think. All right? They were more representative than random, for sure. Um, and, uh, and they're interesting. So to, prefer, to provide a clear identity of the chiropractic profession for the public, actually this sort of discussion is something that's a global discussion still. Uh, one that's happening in America as well. Probably not one that's happening in Denmark, where it's much more integrated, but certainly in, in other countries in the world, where there's the, the, the idea of how do we talk about who we are. Um, to establish a legitimate mainstream reputation for the chiropractic profession. There was no indication about how you might do that, but that was something people felt was important. And to improve collaboration and working with other healthcare professions. Interestingly enough, this, this one actually came up a number of different times in the mites and the dream goals as well, I think, or at least the mite goals. So that was the must, the sort of things that people were thinking about. This is, this is important. Uh, the top two mite goals, again, identity, to become the default go-to profession um, for, N, for neuromusculoskeletal care. There was an insistence we put NMSK, so we did that. Um, and, uh, you know, in some ways, this is, this is already answering that question, oddly enough, I suppose. And then, again, the, the dream goal was to become the default go-to. So that's a sort of, like, that's what we really like to become, where everybody knew that that's what we did. Um, uh, but with the collaborative stuff in there as well. But collaboration comes up in research as well. So the opportunities that were seen. Increase in burden of MSK. So everybody recognized that MSK was out there, in the, in the sort of, in the global rhetoric, in the public domain, uh, increasingly on the news, in the research, as a really big problem. And that was an opportunity, in a way, for us. Uh, to capitalize on existing evidence supporting chiropractic care, now I'll talk a little bit about um, this one when, I, when just like um, a herpes infection, I appear again um, <laughs> in the next talk. Um, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that one. But, but the, the evidence for chiropractic care as a conservative package is, is really quite strong now. And, uh, and we'll talk about that. So that was an opportunity. And interestingly, this one, which has actually been talked about by a number of different people already. The aging population, the, 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 the realization that MSK problems are going to be in, uh, uh, more important in this population and it's going to be bigger as this population gets bigger, is an opportunity. And I, I, I don't know that we have many geriatric speci specialities in chiropractic. We have a lot of pediatric and sports, but I don't think there's much geriatric stuff going on. Yeah, it's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a massive problem coming at us. Threats. You'll like these. Lack of professional engagement leading to increased marginalization. And that was the top one, the idea that, that we're not collaborating or talking with uh, the wider healthcare arena, I suppose, and that, that, you know, that may lead to just increasing marginalization. Um, reputational damage due to public and interprofessional perception, whatever that may be. The idea, I guess, of um, that, that we're not coming over how we want to come over. Um, and ongoing professional fractionation, which is just a perennial discussion. Um, it's 
like, how long can you have a discussion for? Well, a hundred years. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Uh, now, the research directions. Will that um, go forward now? Oh, there you go. So I've just picked the top two. Clinical. Clinical effectiveness of chiropractic care and effects of a clinician clinical encounter. Now, I promise you that second one was nothing to do with me. I was just one person here. <laughs> uh, but I think it's important. It's an interesting new area. Um, delivery models. People are interested in maintenance preventative model of chiropractic care. I think that's an important thing. Some people claim that. Uh, and I think that probably it is an area of research that we should be looking at. It's certainly something that's been looked at in Sweden, and it looks like some pretty good results coming out of there. Whether it's the manipulations doing it or not, I don't think we can tell. But, uh, but certainly there's some good results coming out in terms of maintenance. If you have more treatments over a longer time period, people seem to do better. And it's not something we do in the UK, so we could repeat that study. And partnership integrated models of chiropractic care with the NHS, and we are doing that. I'll talk about that in the next talk. Valuation of patient experience, outcomes and satisfaction. Maybe that talks to, you know, some more qualitative approaches. Um, and economic evaluation of chiropractic care, which is aligning with uh, the RCC's um, ideas. So that's sort of what came out. <sighs> so, limitations and conclusions. Limitations are self-evident. Right? It was a small number of picked participants yeah, that we tried to make representative across institutions. Um, however, even though we did that, there was some further solid spelling there. Unequal representation of stakeholder groups. So, for example, there weren't as many people from say, the UCA, for example, there was a was from the RCC. So that's obviously a limitation. All right, so we can't say that this is, you know, a robust representation of what the entire chiropractic profession thinks. Um, but it was a first go, I guess. And limited response rates for some of the research items. So all those research items in red we had to eliminate because, you know, only three people answered. Um, so they might have been important, but maybe... And we don't know why they didn't. Maybe there, maybe there was just too many options. People got bored. You know, did the first three and then thought, oh, can't be bothered and just left them out. So who knows? So clear limitations there. And so what are the conclusions? So reputation building, legitimacy, and interprofessional collaboration are recurring themes as goals. Um, the aging population, supportive research, and burden of MSK are opportunities, but lack of collaboration, public and interprofessional perception, and internal fractionation were thought of as threats to this. Um, and efficacy, cost effectiveness, and patient experience are popular research themes, as are interprofessional collaborative models and prevention and maintenance exploration. So it was an interesting exercise. Um, I think that I've sort of got to a point where we've almost written this up as a paper, but I don't know whether we... Uh, it's really robust enough to sort of do as a paper, but we may end up sending it off and just letting some peer reviewers tell us it's not robust enough. Um, but it was a very interesting exercise, and I really, um, we all are very grateful for the people that contribute to this, and, and interesting. So thank you. Thank you.